Todd, I'm sure you had challenge enough with the short week, uh, yeah. but now you kind of have to have two quarterbacks uh, getting prepared sure. at the same time. Mm -hmm. well, what is the key to making that work? Well, I think you have to be tight in your offensive package, what you're going to do as an offense, just not so the quarterback. So the reps that you get in practice are ones you know you're going to use in the game and they're you know well used your time management so to speak and practice is critical to us so that's the biggest thing and making sure that you have the flexibility needed uh, for both guys because you have to prepare both of them uh, you know and as we get closer obviously to kickoff we'll have a better feel for you know where BJ's at and you know and how the rotations or who starts that kind of thing will pan out. So it's going to drag on all week then? We'll well, all week. we don't know anything yet because we haven't been on the field, you know, so to speak. But, it, you know, it, I think it will be a day-to-day. -day, and I'm, as we get closer to game time, Coach Holtz will make a decision, you know, as he feel, feels fit, as we see the progress. It's, you know, it's going to be probably 48 hours, I'd imagine, to see the, where the, 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 the development of his injury goes uh, as we get closer. But, you know, I always assume the worst. That's how you do it as coaches. You say, okay, he's not available. Um, get him limited reps, so to speak and you prepare your backup more because, you know, he hasn't got as many reps. So that's the that's the urgency, so to speak, for us as an offensive staff. How yeah. much does things change for your offensive planning if yeah. Bobby does uh, you know, start? Not a lot, uh, other than the quarterback run game that we've done, you know, uh, probably, you know, anywhere from five to ten snaps a game. You know, we wouldn't ask Bobby to do all those things in the run game, but the screen game, the passing game, the base run game where the tailbacks are the featured, you know, carriers, that won't change. Uh, so. You know, you have one portion of your uh, of your game plan that will change a little bit where the quarterback's an either or runner. You want he, he, Bobby still does them. He practices them every day. We practice them with the ones and twos, but you would certainly wouldn't feature that with Bobby. But uh, you know, you always keep an element in your, in your offense. Todd, if BJ's out, what, what are your options behind Bobby? We have an open trap. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we have uh, you know Matt Floyd who's in the program who we're redshirted. Uh, that's something we'll talk about as a staff. You know, we'll prepare. You know, him uh, to see how it goes. You have uh, other players in the program that play quarterback. You know, and Evan Landy, who's a utility guy, they say, you know, what if it's the last series of game or it's a mop up or winning the game, and you don't want to get you know Bobby hurt. You know, and you're holding BJ. You know, there's a lot of different roles you may stick a guy in there like that. So there's other guys in this program that play quarterback. Ryan Epps can take the team and run the team and you know get us out of a ball game. So, but uh, you know, hey, Matt Floyd's here. He's on scholarship and. Uh, he was a pretty darn good quarterback in spring. You don't want to use him. You don't want to eat his redshirt year up. But if you're also winning that game 14 to 10 in the third quarter and you need him and, you you know, you want to go a bowl game, those are decisions that Coach Holtz will have to make. But we have some options. But it's not out of the question then that he, we he could be an option? We have not sat down as a staff and as with Coach Holtz and said this is our plan ABC because we want to get through today and just see where we're at. But all options are on the table right now. And I think after tonight uh, in practice we'll sit down and say, okay, here's where we're at. Uh, you know, Matt gets flow, our Sunday night practice, so to speak, you know, our, our shorts practices, our third quarterback gets reps in Pasco every week and everything. So he gets reps normally in these days. So uh, that won't be out of the ordinary. And then we'll have to make a decision uh, probably after tonight to see where we're at, where, where BJ's at with everything and uh, what the backup plan will pursue to. They all have the meetings. I don't mean they're all in meetings. They all do the game. Uh, Matt game plans every week. He's in every meeting with them and everything. So it's not like he hasn't been sitting there listening to game plan from Notre Dame to, to this week. You guys haven't had a whole lot of, of positions where you have two backs in the same backfield, but if you have a quarterback who's less likely to run, are you more likely to line up with the two running backs just to give kind of the multi-direction aspect to yeah, things? Yeah, we, we did that uh, once or twice in the... Um, you opened the game with it. Yeah, opened the game with it. I think it was a Rutgers game, maybe it was. We have that in our package. We have the ability with Lindsay Lamar and, and, and Victor Mark and Joe Miller are all former running backs, quarterbacks, big body guys. So we have a lot of flexibilities to give us, you know, two true runners back there where that kind of was BJ's role in some of those plays. So that's practiced pretty much every week for us. And it's something that we'll uh, certainly use to give us a little bit more diversification in the offense, yeah, and the running game. When you look back over the, the last five mm -hmm. series after BJ got hurt on mm -hmm. tape, do you have a better sense as to why things didn't click or why the offense didn't move better well, without it? Here's what the nutshell of the game and period. I, I, we ran the ball pretty efficiently. You know, uh, as the game went on, obviously we, we, we uh, passed the ball uh, at the end of the game trying to, you know, get some things from our run numbers and the second half weren't quite as strong in the last two or three drives. But early throws, first down throws that were going to provide us chunks of yardage, play actions, things like that, we weren't very efficient. I think we were like two or five or two or six, something like that with a scramble in there. And then obviously on our third down throws, you know, and that's where the game, I think, offensively struggled. The rundowns, the screens, the other things we sprinkled in there were, were pretty consistent against a good defense, but we weren't very good. And the first down throws were, I think, were the most critical thing. 
because we knew those had to match our run game to, to get the chunks because you're not going to take that ball. Our starting field positions were, after the first series, were like minus 8, minus 12, minus 24. You're not going to take that thing and go 90 or 80 against a good defense without getting a chunky yardage someplace. So I think that's where we failed. Now I think at the end of the game, um, just the speed of the game and you're coming off the bench and I think he was processing things a little too fast instead of whoosh, take a deep breath, which is easy to say, hard to do when you're in a great game and a great environment. It's a, you know, if you're not involved, it's a heck of a college football game to watch. You know, the guys are going after each other out there. And I just thought it was going a little fast for him and, uh, you know, needed to take a deep breath and relax and, and, and just deliver the ball to the guy, with, you know, the open guy and, and put it in the right spot. He hit a couple of guys just a little in front of him and things like that to get some first downs. But that will come, you know, the more reps that will come. He's shown us he can play and, and uh, he's determined to do a good job. One thing about the kid, you, you're going to get everything he has. And that's, that's a great quality to know you have in him. And I, I'm sure he's going to play really, really well for us. Todd, I know these losses are team losses, but there's yeah. been three games this year where the defense has held the opposition to 10 points or fewer mm -hmm. in regulation and you guys have, have mm -hmm. not been able to win. As a member of the offensive staff, mm -hmm. How tough is that fact to swallow? Oh, yeah. It's no different. You know, like you said, you always take responsibility for your actions, you know, whatever, you know, your side of the ball, your position, whatever it may be. You know, it's, it's, it's no better feeling losing 32, 31 than it is 10 to 9. And when it's your side of the ball that doesn't produce enough on that day to win, you, you, you feel terrible about it. It tears you apart, rips your guts out. Uh, you know, it's, that's the, the negative thing about the profession we do. You're, you're last evaluate on your last performance. Doesn't matter, you scored. Before the week four or whatever, you know, it's what you do last. And so there's a great deal of uh, ownership and responsibility by all of us. And, uh, you know, you, you, you want to scratch and claw one drive, kind of like Notre Dame. We needed one drive to put it away at Notre Dame in the second half. And thought for sure we could get that done and, and just couldn't get the consistency, as we talked about earlier, to finish a drive, you know, whether it be a, a drop, a missed block, or, you know, it was a, it was a all around the issue. It wasn't just a quarterback, just one receiver. It was all around, you know. We had one penalty all day. We had one offensive penalty on the game, one. A procedure, a five-yard penalty, but it took back a, I don't know, a 15 But the timing, yeah, yeah, that, that was the mark yeah, play down yeah, at 23, a yeah. 12, 15-yard game, we're first and 10 on the plus 26. We're in field goal range. Field goal's gonna win that game, obviously, as that thing was unfolded. So you sit there and say, you know what, we got one penalty on the entire day, and it's a five-yard, we didn't have a hold, we didn't have any little block in the back, we didn't have a clip, you know, the ones that kill drives. But the timing of it, you know, there's no excuse, you know, so you feel, when you get in a great game like that where it's back and forth and two teams are battling each other really hard, you gotta understand, and that's one thing about a young team or whatever you wanna, you know, especially the young skill we have playing, one mistake will be the difference. What was the, what was the infraction on that play? It was a procedure, lean, uh, just a uh, legal procedure. Just just somebody had none on the just line? Like, uh, I think it was, like, uh, it was uh, the back, leaned, uh, Daryl Scott leaned, I think, a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, literally, you didn't see it. I mean, he, he leaned like that far, like, Six inches, you know, just yeah. uh, Bobby was holding the count because they were showing blitz. He was trying to give our lineman a chance to see what was happening to him. Yeah. And, you know, he started landing, and like I said, that did it. through that game and said, we got one penalty on a day for five yards. That's a heck of a day. You'll take it. Huh? Yeah, but unfortunately, it's on a play that maybe puts you in field goal position. There wasn't a lot of penalties, but yeah, a lot of trouble on the short yardage. Mm -hmm. um, anything you ever yeah, watching tape? Yeah, we, were two, we had two bad ones. We had one we got uh, on our quarterback snake. Yeah, oh yeah, we had, you know, they like, hey, got in a gap look. We had, a little bit of confusion up front on both of them that we could have picked them up and we just didn't get it executed the right way. Um, they had a hat for a hat, so to speak, for it. We just didn't carry it out properly. And, and uh, you know, the linebacker, on the second one, the linebacker came through, which is owned up to him. And, and uh, we had a kind of a crazy look that caused a little confusion on the first one. So, um, you know, you always watch the tape and say, boy, could we have picked it up? You know, and if you put them in a situation that, ah, you know, we couldn't do it. But it was just a matter of getting it done. We've been really, our third downs have really up until this last game, gotten better, you know, from where we were a year ago. It was a nemesis all year. You know, we were climbing a little bit, and I think the last two or three weeks, we were darn near 100% on third and short. You know, we've been really high on those deals. We had like five of them, I think, against maybe uh, Rutgers or Syracuse, somebody like that. So it had not been an issue for us. Uh, Miami's a good football team, but we could have, I think we could have gotten those without anything, you know, spectacular being done. Anything that you can see you'll try to work on? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. You always work on something. You find a problem, you go back, you address it, you correct the mistakes that you have, first of all. You know, on tape, you correct a couple of mistakes that we saw on that. You look at, you know, what you can uh, do to prepare them better, uh, what you can do to play calling, if there's a better way to do it. But uh, I think we had the mistake corrected, both mistakes corrected, and, and we'll move on. But uh, we'll, we'll look at the package and see what Louisville does on third and short because what one team does, the next team may not. So, mm -hmm. you know, your play selection sometimes changes too. 
Can you just talk about the Louisville defense? Mm -hmm. What you've seen from them, they have to play pretty well. Oh yeah, they've gotten. You know, the defense has carried them all year. You know, as you look at the evolution of the season, they have speed. They uh, play a lot of man coverage. <clears throat> they'll, they'll pressure us, especially you know if they're anticipating Bobby playing. There'll be a lot of pressure, but really they want to play a lot of man coverage. They want to set the tone for the, the game. And, it's very similar to Syracuse, how they play, very similar. Uh, not quite as much blitzing as Rutgers, but we played teams like this in this league, and it would be a physical game. They're, they're playing very physical, and they, they run around pretty good. I think they uh, play a lot of defensive linemen. You know, I don't know if they have one dominant guy to salute that guy, but they play like mm, six, seven, eight guys up front, and they roll them, and they stay fresh, and they, uh, they, they do a good job, you know. Coach with two of them. I know them really well, and they're very good football coaches. And and uh, it, we'll have our hands full, just like the Rutgers, just like the Syracuse. That they, they have a good package. Who's coaching? Charlie and, and Vance Bedford, the deep coordinator. We're all together. Yeah. They play a lot of man. Does that maybe open up the opportunity to take a lot of or more shots downfield? Well, they'll, they'll, they'll give you the shots? opportunity. Yeah, they'll give you the opportunity. We hit a deep ball against them last year on a post, I think, to Bogan, and we had a couple other shots down the sideline. But that that opportunity will provide itself for your matchups because it will be clean. There won't be a lot of confusion about what the coverage is. They'll show it. Now, you know, you got to put in those situations. you got to stress them. you got to take your shots here and there, and, and you got to, you know, make them pay with a pass interference and often making a couple of those plays too.